you ask people what does the brand stand for, they'd say freedom, independence, and rebelliousness. And so you, you know, geez, re rebelliousness, you know, what, what, is, what does that really mean? Well, it, it, it speaks to individuality. It speaks to pushing the limits a little bit. It's okay to have that little bit of edge. And you, know, you get on a motorcycle and you, you, you just kind of puff your chest a little bit. And it, it, it's, a, it's very liberating. And, uh, and I think that just speaks to the brand. You know, it's one of the very few brands on the planet that, that people associate with as part of their, their lifestyle and their own culture. I mean, how many brands can you think of where, where loyal, money-paying customers appreciate the brand and respect the brand and want to be part of the brand so much they're willing to carve your logo on their body? And our, our customers do it time and time again. You hope your, your employees have that same degree of pride, and that's the challenge, you know, because the brand is not necessarily the company. You have to work hard at, at having a company um, you know, culture and value stream that supports and reflects that brand and reflects the owners. I mean, culture happens one of two ways. Left unattended, it kind of percolates up and things can you know, sort of evolve in an organization that you may not be happy with. And left unaddressed, be, you know, be careful you know, you know, what you get. As owners and leaders of a business, you also have to manage culture in a way that ensures it stays true to the, the, the company vision, mission, direction, strategic priorities. Ours is a very detailed process. We, we run an annual associate feedback survey um, across the entire organization, and we have a 95, 96% participation rate. It's a pretty complex uh, survey that looks across eight or nine different categories around supervision, leadership, image, culture. Uh, we actually checkpoint on our values and ask the organization, do you believe that the leadership of the organization is living up to the values of the, the, the organization? The total organization results are published. They're posted on our portal. And then a couple of weeks later, we have uh, associate feedback sessions where they're given some pre-work that identifies, per, you know, kind of the, the lowest scores. And, and uh, so they're asked to think of, you know, what would you want to see happen in these areas? And at the end of the day, it's really one of three answers. Great idea, we're going to do it. And here's who's going to be in charge and when it's going to happen. Great idea, but we're not able to do it, whether it's for budget reasons or it's outside of our scope or what have you. Or, sorry, that's not, a, that's not something that we're comfortable with and we're not going to proceed. And here's, here's why. It's funny because, you know, you, I know a lot of people will look at our company and, and wonder, you know, what, you know, what can a bunch of bikers do? Uh, the reality is we are um, a very successful, extremely well-managed business. Um, and, and if you think about it, we're representing one of the most iconic brands on the planet. And you don't mess around with that. We have been one of Canada's best 50 managed companies for 20 years. You know, our employee satisfaction scores, you know, 97%. Our overall engagement scores are, you know, off the charts. And, you know, there, one, of the, one of the questions that we do ask is around pride. You know, is this a company that you're proud to, to work for and represent? And the answer is, you know, unabashedly yes.